Well, good morning. It is good to see you all here this morning. I asked some people earlier, how many of y'all love the word? Everybody in that row said, I do. So let me ask everybody, how many of y'all love the word of God? All right. Good. Good. Me too. Me too. So I uh, need to tell you that I sent my notes to myself, and I couldn't open them. However, I hardly ever use notes when I preach anyway. So I just like to kind of look at them before, you know. But we're going to pray that God helps my memory. Amen? So our text is coming from John chapter 11. Let me get right to it because I got a lot of verses to read and got a lot of things to share with you. So, John chapter 11, we're going to go from 1 to about verse 37, okay? I have the ESV. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother, Lazarus, was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus, I mean, her, and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are, not, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, excuse me, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus has spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, said to the fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would, have, would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me She'll never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? 
But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Thank you. May God add a blessing to his word. Father in heaven, I thank you and I praise you uh, for your word. And uh, No one wants to hear from me. I don't either. Would you please, by your Holy Spirit, show up and teach. Show us what you want us to see. Cause us to hear what you want us to hear. And help us to do what you want us to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The title of this sermon, you know, in the Baptist churches, especially uh, African American Baptist churches, we the preachers got to have a title. You don't have to, but it, you know, we love to have titles. So this title of this sermon for me is when Jesus is too late. I heard all your theological sighs. What do you mean when Jesus is too late? Jesus ain't never late. That's the first thing I learned in Sunday school. Right. Well, from the perspective of Mary, Martha, and the other people, he was too late. Now, you all act like y'all ain't never been disappointed with God because he showed up too late. How many of y'all prayed for something and didn't get it? Like you were waiting for that job. Or watch this, you were praying about that test that you studied for. Or, or not studied for. By the way, if you didn't study, still pray <laughs> about that test. But yeah, you know, when you're hungry and your parents... You know, they, they said they were going to Western Union that, that money yesterday, and you still, or Zelle that money, I forgot. I'm ancient. It's not Western Union. It's Zelle or Cash App, you that money, and they haven't done it yet. You know, uh, um, some of you uh, are married, and sometimes we're waiting for our spouse to act right, and Jesus ain't done it yet. And so there's many situations and circumstances where if you have not already ran into them, you will run into situations where you're going to say, God, where are you at? If you love the Psalms like I do, you often see the people saying, how long, Lord? How long? My enemies are saying, where's your God? And so there's going to be instances where, where it seems like Jesus is showing up too late for you. Times when you are sick or you have a loved one that's sick. Or even one that died and you have been praying for a long time. And it seems like he didn't show up. It seems like Jesus is too late. And I want you to know that Jesus is not afraid of that. He's not afraid of that. So we're going to look at a couple of perspectives of those who are telling him, where, where, where you been? Where you been? So look with me. We're not going to go through every verse. Of course, we will be here forever. But we're going to look at Martha's response. Now, we read in the scripture that they had sent word, that's a prayer, to Jesus that he should come, that the one whom he loves is ill, but he doesn't go. And so Martha hears that Jesus is right outside the camp. So if you look with me at verse 20 of chapter 11, we're going to look at Martha's perspective. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Let me pause right there for a minute. There's something going on that, that John is doing throughout this gospel. In John chapter 1, John has two major things. One is the creation thing. That's why he starts out John 1.1 1, 1, in the beginning, right? So, so he has the creation thing, and it's sprinkled all through his gospel. But he also has this theme of the word becoming flesh in John 1.14. So in order to kind of grasp this, you have to... I have to frame it that way, and you have to put on the John 1.14 glasses to see it, okay? So in John chapter 1, when John the Baptist sees Jesus, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, right? So what is, what, what is John doing here? If, if the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, right, then he, he's actually looking at Old Testament theology, which is the word that they had, and looking at it becoming, it, it, it's right there in front of them. The Old Testament theology is from the book of Exodus where, where, where uh, Jesus, I mean, where there's a Passover lamb, right? And, and they painted the blood on their doorposts and the, and, the, and the death angel passed over them, right? And they were supposed to remember that. Well, that was a shadow of Christ. So when John the Baptist sees Jesus, he sees the word from that theology living right in front of him. The word became flesh. Watch this. He does it again in John chapter 3. He does it with Nicodemus, the teacher of Israel, right, who wanted to know about the kingdom of God. All Old Testament theology. And what does Jesus tell him? In so many words, you're looking at the kingdom of God. The word had became flesh. The woman at the well of Samaria, when she says, she says to him, we know that the Messiah is coming, right? That's the word that she believed, is that the Messiah was coming. And so she realized in that conversation that she was talking to him, that he came. The word became flesh. You understand that? So, so watch this. Martha's theology is coming from Daniel chapter 12. She is looking at a promise from the past for a God in the future. What she misses is, is the God that's there right now. We do that all the time. We face with situations and circumstances we remember what Jesus did in the Gospels. We think about he's not here materially, like in the flesh right now. And then we think about he's coming back. But he showed up to show Martha that, and John will later say this, that he's the God who was and is and is to come. And what we always do if we look at the God who was and we look at the God who is to come and we miss the God that's, that is, that's right here. That's why he tells us, I am, right now, I am the resurrection. And that's what we need to learn how to do. Watch this. You're in a, one of the best, if not the best, Christian universities in the entire world. That's my own opinion. And you're going to see a lot and learn a lot about Jesus on paper. You're going to write about it in your papers. You're going to read about it in your Bibles. You're going to read about it in your big theological dictionaries and commentaries about all that. But watch this. When you hit a crisis, you need him to become, come off those pages and be in the flesh. You need the God that's here right now. That's what you're going to need. That's what I thought about when I said, what am I going to, what am I going to give them? What I want to give you is this, is that you got to take Jesus off the pages. 
the word becomes real and flesh in your situation, in your circumstance, right now. But Mary had the same perspective. Drop down to verse 32. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was in Psalm, she fell at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Same perspective. Now, we know also that Jesus is moved by her weeping and the weeping of the crowd. But then I want you to look at verse 37 real quick. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Now, so you got Martha. Well, first of all, and, and he's always teaching the disciples. And so for the sake of time, I didn't put them in this sermon. But, of course, he's teaching the disciples things about him. But he has to teach something to Martha. Um, Martha has her theology right. She has her theology right. But what Martha is failing to do is she's failing to, um, to um, take her theology and apply it to her situation, right? And so Jesus, holding back from coming when he did, he's actually showing us that he needs to increase her faith. And so why am I saying this to you? That when you're in those situations, you're wondering where Jesus is. How come he didn't answer this prayer? You know, where's that money? How come I'm still sick? Why is my auntie dying? Whatever the situation, you need to know. And I want you to remember that God could be holding back to increase your faith. It's very important. And he's going to increase her faith. Why? Because she's talking about a resurrection that's coming in the future. And he's talking about him. I am the resurrection right here and right now. That's, that expanded her faith about who he is. Before, she called him teacher. Even though our translators do us a favor and they capitalize the T, she's calling them teachers, right? Instead of calling him God. He's saying to her, I'm God. It's me. And she calls him teacher. But she needs to know that he's God in that situation right here, right now. And that's what you're going to have to know. That that might be why he's holding back. Here's another reason. Go back to, well, I, I showed you Martha and Mary and even the people's perspective. But now let's look at it from Jesus' perspective, okay? So we go back to verse 1. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. There's your reason. That's, that's the reason why he delayed. Because the Son of God is to be glorified through it. I don't know about you, but if I know that I'm in a situation and circumstance, it would help me greatly to remember that the Son of God is going to be glorified through it. That would help me be able to go through this. That's going to help you be able to go through college, here, through your classes through those hard things that you have to do. It's going to help you that the Son of God may be glorified through this. That's his perspective. It's his perspective, really, that's count since we're waiting on him. Don't you want to know what he thinks? That's his perspective. And then he goes on, verse 5. Now, Jesus, it says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister 
and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Now, this is John's comment on this, right? Jesus is not talking here or anything. This is John commenting and telling us. And I asked the question, why does John want us to know this? And here's the, here's the reason. This old, this old guy that I know that I love dearly told me this a long time ago. He said that God's love is not a pampering love. Where every little, you know how we do babies. You know, every little thing, you know, we got to wipe it off. That's the first baby. <laughs> Second baby is like, like, why don't you clean your baby? <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, so it's not a pampering love. It's a perfecting love. That's why you're going through it. That's why you'll go through it if you haven't gone through already. And you, if you're going through, you'll go through another one. But it's a perfecting love, not a pampering love. And I want you, and I know y'all are real quiet, but I want you to turn to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor and say, take them pampers off. Yeah. God wants to potty train us and wants us to use the bathroom on our own spiritually. Right. It's not a pampering love. It's a perfecting love. Grow up. It's a, I want you to grow up, love. I want to expand your faith. I want to expand your worship. In verses 32 through um, 34, you see um, before, actually, verse 32 Mary falls at Jesus' feet and she worships. Guess what? He wants to exp he wanted to expand her worship. And I'm gonna show you how. Watch this. You don't have to turn there. You can do it later. In John chapter 12, they're celebrating at Lazarus' house. And Mary now is not just at his feet, but she's anointing his feet with this very expensive oil and perfume. Matter of fact, it came to the attention of Judas Iscariot. And so Mary, who always, we always see her at Jesus' feet, now she's at Jesus' feet plus. It's costing her something. It's worship. Her worship has expanded. I said, well, what about verse uh, one where it says, verse two where it says, it was Mary who anointed the Lord. It's not talking, he's talking about a future event. John is confident. In verse two, you, if, if you're mistaken, you'll think that he's talking about a different time that Mary did this. No, he's talking about what she's going to end up doing. That's what he's talking about. So her worship was expanded. Martha's Faith was expanded. And then watch this. In verse 45. No, I'm sorry. Let's look at verse 41. Martha had just got through saying that, you know, don't take away the stone because he smells. And um, Jesus told them to take it away. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice. And Lazarus came out, dropped down to verse 45. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, watch this, believed in him. Believed in him. What if Jesus showing up too late for you? And what if he's doing it because he's trying to use your situation to cause unbelievers to see him? and see you trusting him, and say to themselves, 
hmm, I think I might want to try this Jesus. Her faith is so strong. She went through that thing. That was hard. But she never changed. Matter of fact, she got more compassionate, more generous, more giving. She wasn't bitter. She got better. And so when you think Jesus is too late, understand this, that it's, that's your perspective. It may be the perspectives of others around you. It was Martha's, Mary's, and then they had a whole crew. That was their perspective. And if that happens, there's a good chance, there's a good chance that you may remember this and know that what Jesus is doing is not just to affect you, but the people that are around you watching as well. Can he use your faith when it seems like he's too late? Can he? That's my challenge to you. Is to look at it through his eyes, his perspective. Maybe the word wants to become flesh in that situation. And by the way, if you're a Christian and you're a believer and you're in a situation, God gives you opportunities to be the word that becomes flesh as well. Dr. Perrin told me the other day, he said, just be Jesus today. That's my charge to you. That's my challenge to you. When Jesus seems like he's too late, look again. See what he's doing. Thank you.